I, I have another project that I need to work on, which is this wheelbarrow. I kind of overloaded it the one day and I broke one of the handles. So I've had this wheelbarrow for a long time and this is a particularly good wheelbarrow. You know, wheelbarrow is a handy thing, but there's a big range in wheelbarrows. You know, this is kind of like a mid-range one. But they tend to use rather poor wood. And I overloaded her the other day and she snapped this off. Now, it doesn't surprise me that much I've broken wheelbarrows before. But a wheelbarrow is a very handy tool. It's hard to get by if you don't have one. They're, they're really important. Now this one, like I say, is kind of mid-range because this one has at least a one-piece handle on it. So many of them that I see now will come with, it'll actually be two pieces. There'll be a splice in the handle with a metal bracket, which makes for a flimsy wheelbarrow. The only reason they do that is because it's easier to ship the disassembled wheelbarrow. Everything will fit in the tub. You know, that's all it's for, it, it, but it makes a poor wheelbarrow. So if you see one that's got that bracket in the middle holding the handle together, you can go a little higher. But now when this one came, it was covered with some kind of poly, which is just ridiculous stuff because now here, you know, the poly is just peeling off. Plus, the wood is just some like a pine, you know, it's, it's just a poor wood. And even looking at it, I can see the grain runs at a bad angle. You know, these things are just mass produced. Now here you can see a little bit of the, the poly still coating. But you know, it doesn't do any good to you if that, if the water, once it gets underneath that poly, then it's free to go all through the wood and it just gets underneath that poly, so it doesn't really do you any good. So this will be replaced. Yeah, just ridiculous stuff. It makes a shiny surface, but you know, of course it'll be pine tarred when I'm done with it. I'll make a decent handle. And there is this angled piece in here that needs to be replaced too that levels your tub out. So I have to make one of those, or two of those. But otherwise the basic unit's a pretty good solid wheelbarrow. Okay, but what I was saying, like the grain now that runs at this angle, you know, bad idea. Now people used to be real careful about how they line grain up. Uh, they're pretty poor about that now. But this is the piece of oak that I'm using. You know, it's well dried, you know, part of the rock. But what I'm doing here now is I'm lining up, you know, I'm going to cut these pieces out with the table saw, cut them extra big and then I'll plane them down. But you'll notice that this piece is narrower here than it is here. So your grain actually is running like this. So what I'm doing to line this up to get my straight grain is using a chalk line which is a handy tool and they've been around forever I think I got her over chalked So the Egyptians were using these for a similar device, and they're dirt cheap. Pull them snug and just snap them. They'll give me a line to follow with the table saw. I'll end up with this wedge-shaped piece in the middle, but that's the part that I'll be using for those little level wedges. But chalk line, good tool, very cheap. And usually they'll come in a set with more chalk. But I'm going to take the table saw and an eyeballer and run her down that line. 
So I get these two pieces, which will be used for the handle. You know, I'll cut here. You'll get this piece out. Then I'll flip it over and cut here. But like I say, I'm cutting, you know, I'll cut a lot bigger than I need to. And then I'll wedge her, edge her down with the planer so I can keep an eye on it and make sure I get right with the grain and everything. But if you ever look at some of the old uh, horse gear, like the draw bars and uh, the single trees and the double trees, when they made them, they split that wood out before they cut it. You know, they they make sure that the grain runs the right way because it's very important, and especially in things like a handle. Well, I have two good solid oak straight grain pieces. And this is the old one that I'm using to line up my holes. But I'm actually going to make it, make the handles about six inches longer on this end. Uh, basically because I'm tall enough where the handles would be useful to be a little bit longer. You know, they're kind of made for a generic deal. But Okay, one thing I was going to mention like here, I'm drilling these holes in here. What I'm using is one of these brad point bits. So in the first place, you know, I always make pieces extra long so I can cut off the extra, you know, and that's what that is. But the thing to do is to drill holes, and if you're going to put a hole in the end of something, drill the hole before you cut the end off just a smart move but also with these brad point bits you know you drill and you go in but just don't push all the way through go in so far that your brad point will stick out the other side then flip the piece over and go from the other way just makes a cleaner hole otherwise you can get a really ripped up edge on a, on the hole but that's something you learn you know, because sometimes it just takes out a big chunk, but that's where it helps if, you, if you're not working right on the end, if you've got that extra that you can then cut off. And one other thing I did, I, I have a router, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it's back there on a little table. And I used a roundover bit to knock these edges down. Because otherwise, you know, a, a hard piece of oak, that edge is, is really sharp, actually. And where it helps is when you put the finish on, if, if you have a sharp edge, that's where your finish is going to crack off. You know, it's going to hit that something, bang on that, and, and chip that off, and then it starts rotting. Make a round edge on it, then the finish has got a better chance of staying. Plus, you know, you aren't going to bark your shins on it as bad. But now I'm trimming these ends down. Put the rest of my holes in. And then I gotta cut the handle to length. So like I say, it'll be six inches longer. And then I'll just take the draw knife and make that that shape here. Though I don't think I'll take it down. This is smaller than need be. I'll go a little bit bigger than this. Basically just round off the corners. You know, because that's a little smaller than right for me. You know, that's the one thing, you can kind of customize this stuff for you. You know, this project is going to take me pretty much all day. Though I take breaks down again. But, I can be sure, you know, some people are going to say, well, you know, you could buy handles. Or, the truth is, you could probably buy a new wheelbarrow cheaper than you could buy the new handles. And so if you considered like the, the time I'm putting into it, uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense that way. But this will be better than any one that I could buy, and I'll be happier with it in the long run. And, you know, like say, if I was to work, you know, I'd make enough in one day to buy two wheelbarrows, but it wouldn't be the same. You know, I'll take a day 
to fix my wheelbarrow. A lot sooner than buying a new one. Because a new one would never be the same. Now I'll have to take a knock this edge down, but for that I'll use a rasp. You know, I can rough it like this, but I'll use a rasp to do that. A little bit of body work. Now, everybody's favorite, pine tar. It's going to be good for hundreds of miles. <laughs> 